Have you ever stopped to wonder what's really happening behind the screen of your favorite app? Well, in this explainer, we're going to pull back the curtain on the invisible architecture that makes it all tick, data structures. They're the hidden foundation, you know, the digital blueprint of our entire modern world. And honestly, understanding them is the key to understanding technology itself. I mean, seriously, think about it for a second. How does a social media app instantly find your friend's latest post from literally billions of others? Or how does a music service just pull up that one specific playlist you want in a fraction of a second? Now, this isn't magic. It's the result of solving one huge universal challenge. How do you organize an insane amount of information so you can find and use it, like right now? And the solution to that crazy challenge is right here. A data structure, at its heart, is just a really clever, specialized way of arranging data. It's the difference between a messy pile of clothes on your floor and a perfectly organized closet. And let me tell you, choosing the right structure can make an app feel lightning fast, while the wrong one, well, it can grind the whole thing to a painful halt. So let's start with the most basic problem of all. Forget computers for a minute. How do you just keep a list of things? You know, a shopping list, a list of your friends, a to-do list. This simple idea, it's the starting point for pretty much everything else. Okay, so the first, and let's be honest, most intuitive solution is something called an array. Just imagine a bookshelf with numbered slots. If you want the book in slot number five, you just go directly to slot five. It's incredibly fast, right? In the digital world, an array stores items in one continuous block of memory, so the computer can jump to any item instantly just by knowing its position or what we call its index. Now, that bookshelf works great as long as you don't need to mess with it too much. But what happens when you need to squeeze a new book right into the middle? Ugh, you'd have to shift every single book after it just to make room. And if you take one out, you're left with this weird empty gap. All of a sudden, that simple organization becomes a ton of work. And in the computer world, work means slow. And that big limitation leads us to a much more flexible solution, the linked list. So forget that rigid bookshelf. A linked list is more like a scavenger hunt. Each item on your list holds a little clue that points you directly to the next item. So if you want to add something new in the middle, you just change two of those clues to link it right into the chain. Removing something is just as easy. It's amazingly flexible for lists that are constantly changing. And this brings us to our very first crucial trade-off. See, there's no single best answer here. With an array, you get that lightning fast access. That's why your phone's photo gallery can load instantly. But it's a real pain to modify. Now, with a linked list, modifying is a total breeze. But to find the 100th item, you have to follow 99 clues just to get there. That flexibility, though, is why social media feed can easily pop new comments right into the middle. It's all about choosing the right tool for the job. Okay, so we've got ways to store a list, but sometimes the order in which we access things is just as important as how we store them. And this leads us to our next big idea, controlling the flow of data. So here we're looking at the two main strategies for managing that flow. First up, you've got the stack. Its rule is last in, first out, or LIFO. Just think of a stack of plates. The last plate you put on top is always the first one you take off. Then you have the queue, which is the exact opposite. It follows a first in, first out rule, or FIFO. Just like a checkout line at the store, the first person who gets in line is the first person to get served. Makes sense, right? And you use these every single day without even thinking about it. That back button in your web browser, that's a stack. Every time you go to a new page, it gets pushed on top of the stack. When you hit back, it just pops the top one off. The undo feature in your text editor, same deal. And queues? Oh, they're everywhere. Managing your print jobs in the order you sent them, organizing tasks on a server so that nothing gets overloaded. They're the invisible traffic cops keeping everything in the digital world orderly. All right, so far we've been dealing with pretty simple lists, but modern apps, they deal with just enormous amounts of data. So what happens when your list doesn't have 10 items, but 10 million? Yeah, just walking through the list one by one is no longer an option. We have a serious need for speed. This is the key question that pushed us to the next level of data structures. I mean, searching through a million items one by one could take forever. We need a way to find a needle in a haystack, and we need to do it in the blink of an eye. How is that even possible? Well, our first solution feels kind of like a magic trick. It's called a hash table. Imagine you're checking your code at a party. They hand you a ticket. Let's say it's number 27. Later, you don't have to look through all the codes. You just give them the ticket. 
A hash table does the exact same thing for data. It uses this special mathematical process called a hash function to turn any piece of data, your name, a photo, whatever, into a unique number, its ticket. Then it just stores the data at that numbered spot. Lookup becomes almost instantaneous. It's wild. Okay, so our second solution is for when you need that speed, but you also need your data to stay organized and sorted. This is the binary search tree. It works kind of like a game of 20 questions. With every single question, you get to eliminate half of the remaining possibilities. A search tree does this with data. It starts at the top and asks, is the item I'm looking for greater or less than this one? With each step, it cuts the search area in half, just homing in on the target with incredible speed. And just look at the difference here. This. Right here is why data structures are so absolutely critical. To find one item in a million, a simple list search could take, in the worst case, a million steps. A binary search tree, by chopping the data in half each time, gets that down to about 20 steps. 20! In a well-designed hash table, on average, it takes just one. One step. That's not just an improvement, that's a complete game changer. So far, all our structures have been kind of linear or hierarchical. But the real world is messy. It's not always a neat list. A lot of the time, it's a complex, interconnected network. I mean, how do you model something like a social network, where you're connected to your friends and they're connected to their friends? Or how does a GPS app represent all the cities and all the roads connecting them, each with its own distance and traffic conditions? A simple list just can't handle this web of relationships. And the answer is the most flexible data structure of them all, the graph. A graph is simply a collection of points, we call them nodes or vertices, and the lines connecting them, which we call edges. That's it. It sounds so simple, right? But this basic concept is powerful enough to model almost any network you can possibly imagine. And trust me, they are truly everywhere. Your social network is a graph, where you are a node, and your friendships are the edges. When your GPS finds the fastest route, it's treating cities as nodes and roads as edges that have weights for things like distance or travel time. Even the World Wide Web itself is just one giant graph, with web pages as the nodes and hyperlinks as the edges that connect them all. Phew, we've covered a lot of ground, from really simple lists to these complex networks. So how do we put it all together? Well, the single most important takeaway from all of this is understanding that every single choice involves a trade-off. This right here gets to the absolute heart of it. There is no silver bullet. There's no one best data structure. The real skill isn't knowing just one of them. It's in deeply understanding the problem you're trying to solve. A great developer analyzes the situation and then chooses the structure that has the right set of strengths and weaknesses for that very specific task. So let's break down this little cheat sheet. If you need lightning fast, direct access, and your data hardly ever changes, an array is your perfect choice. But if you're constantly adding and removing items, you need the flexibility of a linked list. For pure, blazing fast lookup speed where the order doesn't matter, nothing, and I mean nothing, beats a hash table. And finally, when you need both that speed and for your data to stay sorted, a search tree gives you the best balance of both worlds. You see, in the end, these aren't just abstract concepts for a textbook. They are the fundamental building blocks. They're like the Lego bricks of our digital world. Every app, every website, every piece of software you use is built on a series of deliberate choices and trade-offs, just like these. So the only question left is, now that you know the rules of the game, what will you build with them?